Hello there, I'm Sean Grizzly and welcome to volume 10 of the C++ tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be discussing 2D arrays and what they can do for us, why they work, and a little look at the define function. Okay, let's have a look at this example. What we're going to do is that we're going to initialize the 2D array to 0, pretty much like we did in the first array tutorial. The user will enter some information and we're going to display that onto the screen. <coughs> okay then, let's make an array. So when you're creating 2D arrays, you put the uh, type specifier in like so again. Then we'll say, we'll call it array, make it nice and simple. But instead of one set of square brackets, we're going to use two because it's two dimensional, therefore we've got the x dimension and we've got the y dimension. So if you had that before, that would have contained the values 0 to 4, like so. But if you changed that, Let's make it a little smaller, it's less typing. Okay, that means you have 0 to 3, which is, no, sorry, 0 to 2, which is this one. Remember, you don't include the highest number, it's 0 to 2, and that one's 0 to 1. And like, oh, a little typo there. So 0 to 1 here, then you're going to have 1, 1, and 2, 1. That is this array structure. It might work if I did it a little bit so you can clearly see an example. Four. And that'd go to four downwards. Okay. You can have one down there. You can have two. I've missed two there. Three. And four. Uh, that is how this array structure is laid out. As you can see, it's two dimensional. One, two, three, four going that way. One, two, three, four going that way. And you've got all possible combinations when this is zero. For example, when this is one, you've got one, one there. And, yes. And you can obviously have one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four or things like that. So that is how this array structure is set out. So for this example we'll put something like 5-5 five five in there. That gives, it, gives us a two dimensional array from 0 to 4 vertically and horizontally. If you think of a, an imaginary grid inside your mind something like 0 to 4 by 0 to 4 then fill in the numbers which fill in the gaps when you've got one you'll have two three four etc in the other one okay then the advantages of 2d arrays is that this single array can not only contain four values but four by four values so it'll hold 16 values in this single variable all right if you remember our first tutorial on arrays you'll know that when you initialize them and display them you need to use four loops for two dimensional arrays you need to use what's called a cascading for loop. It may seem a little confusing at first but once you get the hang of 2D arrays you'll be typing two for loops out every single time automatically. So let's take a look at this. Let's start the array at zero. Remember for loops have three sections. Our maximum value here is five. So we don't want it to be 5, we want it from 0 to 4, so it will be less than 5. And then we've got our incrementer. We've then got another for loop here. Which will be our y-axis, x and y-axis, if you're familiar with graphs at all. I'm oh, sorry, y is less than 5. Alright, I've been used to the X1, I should have just copied that statement from above, but it's okay. Okay, do you remember when we put the um, X inside the square brackets before? Well, we put XY inside this time. So if you think about it, 
this statement x will equal 1 to 5 when x equals 0 it will execute this inner for loop so that for loop will have repeated once this one's repeating 5 times inside this one so every time this does it once this does it 5 times because it's the inner for loop so while x is 1 y will be 0 then y will be 1 then y will be 2 all the way till it gets to 4 then uh, that's going to change to 1 this will reset to 0 then 1 then 2 and as you can see all the bases are covered so we'll change that back to xy you might be thinking this for loop might need a brace here because we've got more than two statements well the rule is it's more than one actual function itself as you can see this is a whole function it's a for loop if we had two statements in the for loop you then yes we'll need curly brackets for example if we wanted to say um, successfully initialized then put a new line here so we're going to display to the user when it's been initialized then we'd need curly brackets here but because this is a whole function it's a for loop we don't need curly brackets actually under here because that's one whole function if we had an if statement under it then yes we would ok hopefully now uh, we should have initialized our array every single entry to zero and it will, it will tell us when each one has been initialized remember to save your work when using for and while loops before you compile well we've got a little error here ok we're missing a semicolon somewhere before four ah there it is at the end of array always a common error there we go successfully initialized every single one and hopefully sh there should be 16 of those but I won't bother counting ok as you can see everything has been initialized ok we can now accept input from the user if we want but it's a very tedious 16 entries if you remember our first array example but remember when displaying adding we use the same structure of for loops so let's think what we can do here let's input something from the user I don't know why but please enter 16 numbers of your choice ok then oh that's what numbers wrong ok so the user is going to enter 16 numbers we cannot put it outside the for loop because remember it's, we're wanting to put 16 in here so let's put it here ok we can delete that one we don't need to initialize that so when the user enter, enters his first number we can be really clever about this actually if we think uh, number oh that needs to be a string telling the user kind of which entry is that with this you'll see what I mean so number x dash y and I think that should be ok that's probably a little star ok you'll see what I mean by this now when we execute it you might have picked it up already good for you if you have save your work you're using for loops oh we've got a quick error here ah yes common mistake we've already used x and y and we've already declared them inside this main procedure therefore we can't use them again so if, let's change it to double x and double y doesn't like use, uh, you using things twice ok double x and double y save your work it's a for loop just in case we can go wrong there we go 
successfully initialized the first batch. There, number naught dash naught. Please enter sixteen numbers of your choice. Naught dash one, naught dash two. So it's entering numbers. See how it's going like this? It's going in blocks of four until all the arrays have been initialized. It's not remember it's not going to do anything yet, but as you can see, four four block four, that's four times four, sixteen. That means all the arrays have been initialized and there's sixteen entries there. So this array will now contain all the information the user has just entered and to display that we can just copy this for loop again and we're we using triple x now of course you can use anything you'd like but I like sticking to x and y it's nice and simple okay now we can just display this array to the user and show what show him or her what they have entered so see how your array. Let's end the line after each one. And there we go. So what we're going to do, we're going to initialize them all to zero. Let's get rid of that. It's a bit tedious. Okay. Nice and tidy code now. Three little blocks. So initializing them to zero, the user is going to enter them, then we're going to display them straight back to the user. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 for good luck. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and there we go. 1, 2, 3, all those. And we've displayed them as we've written them into the array. There. I've just thought it won't be 16, it, it will be 5 times 5, which is 25. Because we're starting at naught, we're finishing at 4, that's 5 numbers. So that will be 25 numbers here. And as you can see, we ended at 5. We've ended the display at 5. Started at 1, started at 1. We've got all the others. So that's 25 numbers there, and that's your array. So... This is Sean Reasley, thank you for listening to the tutorial on two-dimensional arrays. And I think actually before I quickly summarize this tutorial, I will briefly describe the define function up here. It's actually necessary in tidying with 2D arrays, so it's best you actually know this now. So the define function is a pre-processing statement, as you can see when I discussed in the first tutorial pre-processing this, it's pre-processing your define functions and this statement here. Let's keep this separate. Okay. So with a define function you define a variable as you can see x or whatever you'd like. So I'll define x as 5 and define y as 5. That is all you have to do. Remember pre-processor statements don't have semicolons at the end so don't be in, you know, entitled to put one there but if you do you will get an error and you'll probably spot it anyway. So we're defining x as 5 and y as 5. You don't need any equal signs or anything. The reason for this is that x and y now contain the values 5. You may find this really easy if we can just change this here x, y, x, y, x, y. So whenever we want to change the capacity in the arrays, all we have to do is change that to 6, change it to 4, change it to 3. Let's change it to 3. So that means the array will now contain 3, and the for loops will handle 3 numbers. It's not handling five every time and we don't have to change every single entry every time we want to upgrade the array it's all stored in these two little digits here so let's see if our array handles naught to two which is three entries naught to one and i think that will be nine entries in total and as you can see it's handled nine and displayed nine and that is called the define function. Of course, they don't have to be the same. They can be anything you want. It can be 3, 1, 3, 4, 
3388 if you want but remember things like this will take a lot of computer memory up so good luck with that and this has been Sean Grizzly thank you for listening to volume 10 of our C++ tutorial on 2D arrays goodbye